Welcome back. We learned earlier this week on PTL that spring is the best time to sell a home, specifically the first two weeks, a very short window in the beginning <laughs> of May. And so a lot of you may be getting ready to list your home, clearing out the clutter. So, or maybe you just want to do some spring cleaning I and do. get the clutter out of your home. Mm -hmm. So we asked our favorite antiques expert, Dr. <laughs> Lori, to come make a house call and tell us what we should be doing so that we don't make a mistake. That's right. You don't want to get rid of something valuable, right? Perfs, of course. So a couple of things I always tell people, and I've said this at my shows for 20 years, I hate to admit, fine art, furniture, precious metals, including jewelry. Okay? So, oh, that ugly picture of Aunt Hildegard on the wall might be valuable. Might be. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Not just that, but the frame. The frame oh, the could frame. be. That's my girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the frame. So don't forget about the frame. So those types of things. If it's a family heirloom, it's a military collectible. If it's something that, you know, has been handed down and handed down and handed down, I really don't need this anymore. Okay. The, I want you to think about those things for your kids and your grandkids. Your kids mm -hmm. always say, I don't want anything. Your grandkids may want it. The other thing I want you guys to think about is this idea that, you know, if I haven't used it in five, in a year, they have that, that thing. Think about donations to your thrift stores, your, you know, your, uh, charities, the churches, the synagogues, whatever it might be, because in the spring they usually have those sales. So you want to think about that for those things that you really don't need anymore. If you've lost someone, and I talk mm -hmm. to families a lot, if you've lost someone, you want to keep every single thing because you're trying to keep the memories. Right. The power of 10. Choose 10 objects that relate to that person and let those stay with you and let others go. Wow, those are think some... about that. So, I mean, I, I go through and doing in-home appraisals with families who are mourning often. Right. So think about those things. But I always say that quilts can be valuable and people don't know it. Um, some people are surprised that costume jewelry can be valuable and people don't know it. Um, people are also surprised that um, prints, well, everybody said, oh, it's just a poster, it's just a print. You know, posters from movies and things can be very valuable. And video games. Really? Your 1980s, oh, really? 1990s, Atari, those kinds of things, you know, your old Pac-Man kinds of things, but video games can be very valuable. And I'm talking 10000 $30,000, $100,000 for one game. Holy big money, cow. big That's money. Well, let's yeah. talk about cleaning, too, because I think a lot of us just get right to it. We have our cleaning supplies that we love, but you say be careful. Don't just jump right into it, especially when you're talking about artwork. That's right. Don't be overzealous. Everybody thinks that, paintings, that painting needs to be cleaned. Paintings don't always need to be cleaned as often as you might think. Unless somebody was a very heavy smoker or, you know, the, the, the varnish on the painting has really, really started to darken, you typically don't need to clean a piece. Don't forget your local museums. They're great race resources for restorers, framers, uh, professional cleaners, those kinds of things when it comes to artwork. Silver. Don't polish the silver. I don't care if your mother-in-law is coming over. <laughs> don't polish the silver. And the reason for it is because you don't want to, when you're polishing the silver, you are polishing or abrading, scratching off one level of the silver. So don't be overzealous. Once a year is enough. I like that. Yeah. You've given us permission yeah. not to do as much work. My All mother right. doesn't like it, but I'd say be a little dirty. What about <laughs> glasses and bottles? Because that's something that people might want to clean up, too. Yeah. You could actually hurt the value of some of those. You can hurt the value. Also, do not submerge um, any glassware into, like, you know, you fill up your sink with water. You're going, I'm going to clean it. You're not going to submerge it. Don't submerge. It's like you diving into a, a pool and getting that shock through the system, you may crack the, the crystal or the glassware. And what I really want to get to is you say the tools are just as important as the cleaning supplies and solutions you may be using. That's absolutely true. The tools are very important. So be careful and make sure that you are using tools that are sensitive. What does that mean? Use a Q-tip instead of using some, you know, heavy tool. So sponge, yeah. Sponge, yeah. <laughs> so you want to be careful of what tools you use. You want to also protect yourselves. You know, I love my gloves. I wear them all the time. So make sure that you are protecting yourself while you do it. And don't stand up and clean. Sit down, put a towel down, and make yourself comfortable and stable. Don't clean when you're tired either. Clean. If you have something <laughs> fragile, don't do it then. Wait until you've got everything going for you. So, so but, common you know. sense and such good advice. Common sense. Thank you very much. Yes, I hope it's good advice. This is why I love Pittsburgh, because you're all reasonable. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we love so you, much. Dr. Oh, Lloyd. I love Thank you, you all. for joining us, I've had a always. wonderful week, and we're here this weekend at the home show. You can bring your objects, but it's wonderful to be here. And, you know, clean a little, but go have some fun, too. Yeah. We're not in Kansas anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> no, 